Hey everyone, I'm Elsa Gamer. Welcome back to Pyre. Uh, we're here about to commence the... I don't remember which number this is. I think this is like number four of the rights. But before we continue, I figured I would take a look at these things. Uh, among the black wagon seafaring equipment, Edwin uses it to signal when food is ready. Ah, cool. Silver called a lime less cold blooded creature rescued from the sea. It is fully grown and has led a rich life. Okay, I guess that's food. A new table. Cool. Another new table. Reader, a moment of your time. You ask what it is on our mind. Hedwin, he is beginning to recover from his illness. However, its sudden onset serves as a reminder, I believe. I have known Hedwin since he was a child. Even now, I hesitate to say that he has grown. Nevertheless, there are such things that even I would never say to him directly. For instance, I struggle with his confidence at times, whether he leads us to our freedom or our doom. I am ambivalent. Speak not a word of this to him. Of course, in case that is unclear, I shall tell him in my own way, if and when the time requires. In any case, when times remain, when times remind me of his mortal weakness, he, I end up having to consider what should happen should we become separated permanently. She trails off a while. What I mean to say is, you should know what I am fully pledged now to this quest of ours, whether Hedwin is the one to lead us to its end or not. I have my reasons. One of them is him. I expect the same holds true for you. That is all I wish to say. Take care, reader. She nods and brushes past you towards the door. Okay. Interesting. Ah, new page. Down the river, in the words of Golgolathenium, I think I just ran paged over his name. Golathenian. There we go, that's better. The Master General, the Emperor Solomon Murr, knew not of this, of course. His expedition yielded not the treasure he desired, but brought him closer to his country than he had ever been before. As he traveled down the river, Slurian in pursuit of greed, he found instead an, incl an inkling of shame. He saw the sunken faces of his people, heard their words for him. In time, he could not ignore it, and it proved more than he could bear. The river finally claimed him, his belongings, and his retinue. Once the people heard, I understand they cried with joy. Perhaps he ought to have perished, but the mercy showed to him, I think, is what transformed him. Uh-huh. Well, moving on. Having landed at the Hulk of Oris, you and your fellow exiles now anticipate the hour that the right are to commence again. What do you think, Tizo? Don't I look just like Mr. Hedwin? Tizo is worried that Hedwin is still feeling unwell. He is 
sensor. Wait, I think what's that? Um sorry, is that a knight's helmet? A serpentine ser a serpentine creature emerges from the water, followed by several others of its kind. You recognize it as a worm of the sea dominion. What they all are doing here, you see plain by their ritual remnants. The nearest one somehow loosens its mask. Um... Good sir. And good ladies. I wasn't even looking at the text when I said good sir. I was looking at his face. Going, good sir, I think you have a giant eyeball in the big middle of it. So, it is you that heed the summons to glorious competition against the knights and his brigade. Well then, let us do battle now without delay. More than our freedom is at stake here, but our very honor, and this knight fully intends to reclaim his. Oh, and lest least this knight forget, he is called Sir Gillum, Gilman. Yep. He salutes you all on behalf of the Pyre Hearts until the, the contest. He splashes out of view, just as the stars above begin to sh shimmer with strange light. It's a, uh, sea snake monster. Relentless, aren't we, reader? Yes, we are. Even the vastness of the sea was not enough to thwart your coming here. Unto the hulk of Oris. You would be wise not to underestimate your adversaries here, despite their pitiable look. I am, of course, referring to the Pyre Hearts. These rites are but another war to them. And that makes you their mortal enemy. Sure. I expect your battle to be glorious. What's with the arena? It's not... Normal. Your fellow exiles are gathered on the rotting deck of the Hulk of Oris as your adversaries clumber into view. Rooker pauls up to them. Say, what are you worms? even doing here. Can't you just swim back to the Commonwealth, or the Sea Dominion, or wherever it is you're from? <laughs> An excellent point. It seems, then, that these adversaries in the rites are clever. What not you say, sir? Just, just get rid of them already, Gilman. As your commanding officer, this knight hereby commands it. This knight wishes to introduce his noble commander. No worm knight is in history has withstood as many frontline battles. Doff your helm, sir, as is our custom. May our adversaries tremble at the sight of you. Sir Gillum attends to his commander's mask despite his protests. Wait, ah, G give this knight his mask. This knight hereby presents to you the great Sir Deluge, a noble visage, is it not? He's freaked out, or she. Sir Deluge trembles and squirms. Uh, so, yes. You can swim or no. Huh. Of course we knights can swim. All knights of the Sea Dominion can. But we are exiles in this land. The same as ye. We can swim, tis true, but tis 
summerly impossible to swim back up the river down which we were flush to end up here. Nay, there is but one way to return. Silence, Gilman. Nobody cares, but back to your post. Sir Gilman hesitates, but does as he is told. Th this knight knows who you are, Nightwings, and he is not afraid of you. He somehow climbs back into his mask and coils up to his full height. Now, on guard! The exiles of the worm Trimiverts take their positions as you focus on the Book of Rights. Okay. Reader, Hedwin's illness means he cannot help us here. He shall be counting on us. Who shall stand together here this night? Let's see. Uh, I think I'll put that on you. Jodariel, Jerusalem. Uh. See. Quickness. Da, da, da. Bonus damage to Pyre. Hey. And Ruka. Rookie. Rookie. The choice is cast. No way these Worm Knights bozos are faster than me. Gilman, status report. What is the enemy's position? They know they now stand ready to confront us, sir. A very brave Chimavarit, they seem to... They seem to this knight's eye. Brave? Air-sucking monsters, one and all. Pyre hearts, be ready. Okay. Begin. <laughs> gotcha. Ow. You guys only do, a uh, 15 damage. How very unfortunate. You Ruka? In banishment. You want to do something here? No, thank you. Stand here for a second. Regain my composure. Resplendent. Gilman, your form is sloppy. Fight them as though your miserable life is on the line. Your words do wound me, sir. This knight gives every right his very, very best. Though perhaps we do have much to learn from such a brave Trimavert as the one whom we now face. Who whose side are you on? Get out there and vanquish them at once. Our adversaries stand divided. Let us take advantage of the opening. There seems to be dissension in your adversaries' ranks. It is little wonder these fools. Absolution! Ouch! Now end 
the ceremony. I thought they had you there. No, nope, they don't have me at all. Excuse me. There it is. Yeah. That's just not enough to take me down though. Thank you. Come on. And it is done. Trying to get as the much money out of this as possible. Hmm, no true. But then again, the ceremony is complete. They did do some damage. I expected more from the Worm Knights of the Sea Dominion. The sea was making me a little queasy, honestly, but we still won. We won. Those worms were quick, all right, but Rookie Greentail's quicker. This knight commands you. Commends you, noble Nightwings. Gloriously fought, indeed. And this knight shall wastefully rem remember this defeat until the end of his days. So silence, Gilman. Th this is all your fault, and now coverting with our enemies, how dare you? This knight has but attempted honorary compliments, sir. Is it not in accordance with the rights to praise one's adversary and a worthy outcome? Worthy? This knight will show you worthy, you miserable little minnow. You are a failure, Gilman. Get now from this knight's sight. What stirs now in the okay. of these exiles? Uh -huh. Ooh, what do we have here? In the, moon touched girl. the scribes, they whisper to me. They do, from time to time. Let's see, what do I get from you? Uh, Faye jumps or sprints, da da. A brief charge up time before Faye can cast her aura is greatly reduced. I think I'll go with this one. trick from the rope collar. All right, and that should be all for now. Until the next round. Yes, indeed. Until the next. Well then, after besting the pyre hearts almost effortlessly, you at last return to the wagon with your companions. There is little discussion of the pyre hearts, who seem to have already swam off toward wherever next the stars directed them. Instead, your fellow exile's attention turns toward your companion who was absent for the right. How is Hedwin? The lone minstrel makes a sound, but no words form as yet. Something is troubling him. He... I urged him to remain bedridden. And? And he... He simply would not listen. I'm very sorry, but... Wait, what? Everyone stares at the lone minstrel in stunned silence. The lone minstrel breathes a heavy sigh, but then... Hey, what's with the long faces, everyone? Minstrel, I should wring that neck of yours. As I was attempting to explain, Hedwin is already up and about. Despite... my having strongly recommended further rest. Those that are unaccustomed to sea voyage and 
take ill, they are very likely to experience further symptoms if they do not remain bedridden, or at least uh, sedentary. Hedwin is running a considerable risk of having to spend another night in great discomfort. What are you, a doctor? Nah. Although I traveled once with one extensively. Look, I appreciate your caution and concern, Tariq, but I'm pretty well accustomed to discomfort here, and I had to see how things turned out tonight. I haven't had to say to stay out of a right like that before. So, you are back among the living then, Hedwin. I was just seasick. Nevertheless, you felt your full recovery requires rest. I think we all could use some rest after tonight. Anyway, thank you, everyone, for your concern. I am sorry that I worried you. Of course, you're further... or caused you further burden. He turns to you. My friend, what do you say we figure out where to go next? I'm beginning to miss being on solid ground. You follow him outside where the night sky awaits. Ooh, okay. Hey, I wanted to thank you for conducting the rites. The right back there without me being there. I could rest easy knowing you and the others would get through it. Anyway, I'll leave you to your reading. Can't begin to imagine where we'll be off to next. We're all... We're well past anywhere in the downside I've ever been. Even Jody hasn't gone this far. He bids you a good evening as you turn your attention back to the sky. Alright, next destination is... Eh... Farther... The Silver Star. Trista. Okay, Black Basin. Still further north than. Not simple. Not simply north. This shall prove difficult. What's the problem? Our destination is beyond the deathless tempest. Ooh, that sounds. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. A vessel such as ours has little hope of traversing it intact. Can't we go around it? Given our confrontation with the Pyre Hearts, our chances back in worm held waters would be give would be even worse. Come on, people. It'll be just another day in the downside. Go get yourself some sleep while we still can. But you you'll feel better in the morning. Your optimism is in fact Infectious, isn't it? You all concur that rest is in order for the sea journey that has been taxing to everyone. Come daybreak, you shall have to find a way to s to sail past the deathless tempest. Holy, the tempest indeed. Alright. Alright. I had to take a short break there for a second. I'm back now. Let's see. Black Wagon. Uh, nothing new in here except for Faye. Oh, hi, miss. I'm so happy right now. I'm happy because I was so worried about Mr. Hedwin for a while there, you know? He was so kind to me when we first met. Him and Miss Jadaryl, and Mr. Greenhill, and you too. But I just really like him. She sighs, she seems happy to be here. Say, do you, um, she trails off for a moment. Do you think he likes me too? Encourage her. 
We should just say that if she has certain feelings for Hidwin, that she should let him know. It is a rare privilege to feel loved. She stares at you a moment, then she begins to laugh. Oh, you're so silly, miss. I didn't mean it like that. That's so embarrassing. Besides, I think that maybe he's a little old, you know? I'm going to go cheer him up. This is a funny story. She bounds off, leaving you to ponder what just happened exactly. Uh, okay. I was just kind of saying... Oh, nice to have family. Let's continue this journey. Uh, right. Ooh, so... Froth Sea. Okay. Uh, valuable finds, or this way. Oh. Tizo. You're a good companion, so let's follow you. The imp, Tizo, has been much more animated even than usual. What is it, little one? Tizo seems to think something very delicious is in the, these waters. He keeps on searching. I don't think I have ever seen him like this. Wait, what is he? Just then, Tizo dives into the waters and vanishes into the depths. Oh, I hope he can swim. He can, but he appears crestfallen when he finally returns, his claws empty. Tizo is very disappointed that whatever he attempted to catch eluded him. Faye begins to sob uncontrollably. The two reveal revel in each other's misery for a time. Uh oh. Maybe I should have gone to the wreck instead. Oh well. You and your companions look upon the Deathless Tempest. The stars be demand you sail beyond it. Yet the very thought is beyond reason. Then something in the nearby waters stirs, and from it springs something familiar. Hold, good ladies and good sirs. This knight beseeches you to hear him, if you please. What is it now, worm? The rites are ended. We have no further need of you. Oh, but you do. And in turn, this knight has further need of you, good lady. Out with it, then. Let us be joined. Let this knight join you, please. Can you believe this, Hedwin? Not really, no. Nay, look ye not so surprised. Your valor and the rights did stir this poor knight's soul. He swears to you upon his long-lost honor as a would-be knight errant of the sea dominion that he shall serve you till the end. What about your other worm friends from back there? The pyre hearts. They are base cowards. Oh, look at that anger. This knight can no longer abide such spineless characters. Having witnessed true glory in our clash upon the Hulk of Horus, never before have we been Trounce so thoroughly. And furthermore, this knight shall aid your passage through the Deathless Tempest. Is it not so that you seek passage to the north? With this knight's aid, you shall achieve your wish. Sir Gilman continues to persuade you for quite some time. He seems to know a way to cross the storm. Some sort of long held secret among worms exiled to these waters. Jiro pulls the rest of you aside after Hedwin gives her a look. Are you most sure that Sandalwood would want this thing along? Mostly sure. Sandalwood wants someone for each mask. And this one seems about as good as we're going to get. Daryl 
glowers back at the worm, who tries his best to look presentable. Hedwin is more gracious. He tells Sir Gilman that if he promises to help you cross the Deathless Tempest, then he can come along for now. This knight is overjoyed, and he hereby swears to see you past the storm. Though first, this knight requires your consent. Give unto this knight your blessings in the name of the Nightwings, and thus shall he go forth. Sure. As you begin to say something to in response, Sir Gilman cries out in triumph. He vanishes into the depths. Yet, through this close en encounter with him, you cling to some sense of where he is going and what he intended to do. Help see his mission through. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Don't think I've ever had to deal with a sea serpent before. At least not like this. Alright. Determined to prove himself to you and the Nightwing, Sir Gilman emerges somewhere in the outer reaches of the Sea of Solus and calls out to you. Master Reader, if you can hear this knight, then he implores you now. Lend him your guidance. This knight's objective ought be not far east of here. Today we shall bring peace to the embroiled sea. Now, however, that among this knight's brethren, the actions we are about to take are highly forbidden. But they are highly just. Thus, Sir Gilman sets forth to quell the storm that rages to the north. Oh. Ha! Herc, yonder lie the foul spawn of unfathomable Plarners. Plarnies? The Sea Titan. Oh. Their eggs. Boiling the seas with their war wrath. Exiled worms within these waters long have harbored these abom abominations, using them to bar passage through the downside's channels for any save the knight's own kind. Be gone now from here, fiends. This knight shall finish what the underking Oros started. Oh -ho. Okay. So, if I make a straight line, I can make a slash cut right through from my starting point and my ending point. Uh oh. Hold it right there, you, you treacherous slug. How dare you turn your back on this knight to your superior. Superior by rank, no longer. For we no longer serve the commonwealth. Last this knight checked. Here, you hold no sway over this knight. Ah, and what have you done to the spawn? Have you no honor left at all? This knight has done that which required doing. His honor cannot sink much lower, anyhow. He figured this would be an ideal time to free himself from a servitude to you. Why, you... You dare to staunch the tippest for those night wings? Good sir Deluge? This knight was born to dare. Now come and fight this knight if you... 
Hearts to Dare as well. Ah, Pyre Hearts. Banish him. This is in order. Uh oh. What now, Sir Deluge? Shall you not face this knight yourself and leave the dirty work unto your charges? Ha fine, Gilman. You wish to stand against your commander, then have it have it your way. Sir Marsh, Lady Seagrass. To me, banish now this troublemaker. Uh huh. Ouch, a three in one hit. You are master of the knight no longer. You are master of this knight no longer, Sir Deluge. Thus shatter our fraternal bonds. Fraternal. Uh huh. This knight would say it was an honor serving you, Sir Deluge, but that would be a bold-faced lie, and yet another stain upon his blackened reputation. Until we meet again. Oh wait, you lowly traitor. This knight will have your head, Gilman. Like I said earlier, bring it on! He has quite the technique. As the day wears on, there is still no sign of the Worm Knight. Your companions grow restless, but then... Hail! This knight returns with newfound tales to tell, and new scars to show for them. Sir Gillen is sopping wet and visibly shaken. He struggles to maintain decorum. He is, in short, the very image of a worm knight. And more importantly, that little tempest out, out no longer pose a threat for now. Behold! As if on cue, the deathless tempest begins to simmer and subside. Interesting. Would you look at that? He really did it. Of course this knight did it. Now, if it would be alright with you, this knight could really use some shut-eye. The worm knight then collapses in, ex in exhaustion. You and Hedwin help him up. A deal's a deal, Sir Gilman. Welcome to the Nightwings. Bid him welcome. And off to our new location we go. Well then, to the icy north we are. With Sir Gilman's aid, you managed to breach the Tempest. You were true to your word, Worm. I shall give you that. But now what? We are stand stranded in this cursed storm. A most excellent question, and from one most fair. Call me that once more, and I shall tie you in a knot. Ah, and from one most spirited as well. This knight was wise to side with you. <laughs> Just where do we turn from here? Answer the question now. <laughs> Sir Gilman does no such thing, although eventually he does make note of a specific current that should lead you to the lands beyond. If I may, I can corroborate Sir Gilman's account. We are close to making landfall. Then let me be the first to say, let's go. Voyage onward. Say, uh, Tariq? Hi, Rookie. What is it? That loot you're always carrying around, you know how to play that thing, don't you? Why, I suppose I do. Good, because I was thinking it's a little gloomy here, and we could use a little tune to lighten up the mood. Know what I mean? Aye, then let me see what I can do. Sorrowful 
finally. What I was looking forward to most. The soundtrack. Stars all hide away from the chill until the evening rides. Oh, 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 oh. At last, your wagon rumbles onto solid, jagged ground, the land called Black Basin. Your fellow exiles unpack the wagon so you can take stock of how best to reach your destination. The place where Plurna scuttled her foe, the doom ship still resides. Ooh, what's this? The Titan had a rend on its brow. You approach Sir Gilman, who must have just finished practicing his fencing maneuvers. He regards with his single eye. Hail, Master Reader. This knight is determined to train harder. Having joined the famous Nightwings, he shall ensure that this Trimavert continues to live up to its most feared reputation. This is such an honor, and this knight has a great deal of honor to regain. Having fled the pre the pyre hearts, this knight fully expects now to conduct the rites in a most honorable fashion to the fullest letter of the law described within the books. Some Trimiverts this knight has met, and perchance mentioned by name, they are inclined to bend the rules a bit, sometimes a lot, and to prevail by any means they can. But this is wrong. The exile, who refuses to obey the rules, as they were written by the under King Oris and his seven friends, deserves neither his honor nor his freedom. Thusly does this knight have confidence the master reader shall Resist any temptations to conduct the rites in an underhanded fashion. Now then, this knight must undergo a thorough cleansing, having trained until the point of full foulness, so please excuse him, Master Reader. He slithers off, humming some sort of chivalrous tone. Okay, uh, whatever. All right, let's survey the, our surroundings. You find that Hedwin has asked for several volunteers to scout the area and report back. All right, everyone, don't go too far, and let's meet back by dusk. Please use caution. The exiles dwelling in these lands are, well, rather territorial. For your part, you remain with the black wagon to keep watch. You see occasional dark shapes soaring across the sky, but none of them draw near enough for you to see in any detail. Eventually, your companions make their way back and everyone arrives as planned, or earlier. Hi everyone, I'm back. I have come back. Faye returns from the east with little to report, save for word that the glowing molten rock there is very, very hot. This knight yet lives although he has little else to report. The newest member of the group, Sir Gilman, returns from his northern pass visibly shaken. He appears to have discovered an in intense fear of heights. Tizo? Tizo wonders whether any species of fish lives in the pools of... pools or rock nearby. Little Aunt Tizo seems disappointed to have left the water behind. He remains with you near the wagon. There is a western pass that seems traversable. If we travel by the light of dawn, the shadows and the crags may well cover our advance against 
whomever may be watching. Begging your pardon, I do not wish to contradict your strategy, madam. Though, in my expert experience, we shall not remain hidden for long during the climb toward the nest of Trista. Okay. The exiles of the high-wing remnants. You may have no love for them in her inherently, but they have no such qualms with me. For now, I may be able to negotiate safe passage. Divinity. Negotiate with them? Then Hedwin steps in as the lone minstrel bells and backs away. Sorry. Hey, let's not decide on this just yeah, yet. Probably. We're not going anywhere right now. That much we can agree on. We'll discuss, we'll decide how best to go ahead come morning. For now, let's take the rest of the uh, the rest of the afternoon and get our bearings. Joe glares at the sky as everyone else dis disperses. Use well your time. I think I will study. All right. Ah, uh, presence. You attune yourself to the strange and mystic properties of the Book of Rites, embracing such as possible that which cannot be explained or truly unknown. Expression comes to you in a flash, whether from the book or from within, you cannot tell. Tenacity. Alright, I'm going to leave it here for now, and we'll pick this up in the next part when we continue the journey. So until then, see you guys.